Hi again. We're making a guitar, but in this session we're not going to be doing any woodwork at all. We're going to be doing metalwork because it's time for a truss rod. I've chosen the Martin style aluminium channel truss rod, but I can't buy any of the commercially available ones because there's some issues with my design where the length has to be just so. And the commercially available lengths won't cut it. Speaking of cutting it, I've cut some channel, I've cut some threaded rod, and we're about to get busy making sparks. So I've just ground down a square nut so that we can insert it into the midpoint of the channel. This means that as we stretch the threaded rod, you can have something to push up and bow the channel. What we're going to do now is cut this barrel joiner nut to 15 mils and cut the shaft of this hex socket bolt to 7 mils. Okay, okay, you can't see the sparks properly because I've got all the lights on. Very well, for this next segment, I shall work in the dark for your viewing pleasure. I've screwed the socket bolt into the barrel joiner nut. We'll put that aside for the time being. I've also screwed our torque nut and our end nut onto our threaded rod, and I'm going to grind the torque nut square so that it can fit inside our aluminium channel. We now have the rod with the squared off nut fitting inside our channel. What I'm going to do now is to cut a slot in between the barrel nut and the socket bolt. Now things get out of my comfort zone. We're going to need to put a bead of weld into that slot that we've just cut and another to couple our torque nut to the threaded rod. We need to talk here for a moment about safety. Some of these items are plated in zinc. Zinc and welding produces fumes that it is very important that we don't breathe. I will be doing my welding outside and I will be paying attention to the breeze and as I mentioned earlier I only need to place two beads. Please be very mindful of fumes when welding steel uh, that is coated with zinc. And like a super trooper, pigeon pigeon booper, welding like a total noob. I apologise to any experienced welders and I hope the counselling goes well for you. This is now too ugly to show in close up, but what we're going to do next is grind it clean, grind it pretty, and in the case of this one, grind it square again so that it fits inside the channel.
While I'm at it, I'm going to also grind off the hex points of the barrel nut so that it's more of circular um, and matches the profile of the socket bolt on the end. I'm finishing the job using my drill press as a poor man's lathe. It's by no means pretty, but it has a, a bullet-like profile and it will do the job. Likewise, our thread now fits inside the channel. What I'm doing now is scribing a line 10 millimeters up from the bottom of the channel along each side. And I've also marked two slots 17 mils from each end which I'm going to cut. What I need to do now is remove the material above the scribed lines in between these slots along each side of the channel. I'll be doing the bulk of that on my belt sander and then cleaning it up with a file. I'm finishing it off with a file and some sandpaper, checking the dimensions at uh, every step. I want the shortened section of the channel to be 10 millimeters even up and down between these slots. Okay, after a lot of sanding, filing and scraping using the edge of the scraper that I don't care about, I now have this channel so that my calipers, when set at 10.1 millimetres, will pass up and down the thinned section. Before we go on, I'm going to vacuum away all of the aluminium dust that I've just created. Now we have the threaded rod fitting inside the channel. A number of things we need to do next. And the first is to grind off the section of threads that just poke up above the uh, shortened section uh, of the channel. The next thing we need to do is to confirm that we have about just slightly less than eight millimeters of useful thread inside the adjustment nut and we need to make sure that our threaded rod, the end that the adjustment nut fits on, is not too long otherwise that's going to bottom out and we won't be able to adjust the truss rod. And finally, we are going to bend these two flaps over at each end to lock in the threaded rod. And then finally, finally, grind off the edges of the uh, end nut, leaving a square profile at the neck end of the truss rod. I'm folding the corners in using the vise. Like so. But, uh, this is the point of commitment because the threaded rod is not going to come out of this again.
go, we've got a nice triangular section there and something slightly less there. I've just been cleaning up some of the final faces with a file and now the moment of truth. Do we have a functioning truss rod? And I think you can see the answer is yes. I will spray some uh, oil and water dispersant inside the channel and when everything is nice and dry we will seal off the top part with a strip of masking tape. Otherwise, stick a fork in it. This is done. Except for one thing. This workshop is now full of metal dust. Iron in particular reacts with moisture, heat and glue to form a bunch of compounds that stain timber black. So I'm going to be cleaning up real thoroughly as soon as I turn the camera off. Join us next time. We're going to be starting on the neck. Thank you.